Why do we wash our hands after we pee? Um, interesting question. Um, I'll tell you a little uh, story about one of the more exciting moments of my life. My uh, second youngest was born at home. Uh, my my ex-wife decided that it would be a great idea to have the the kid at home, unassisted home birth, it's known as. So, you know, she labored at home, no anesthetics, no midwife even, nothing, just a doula and me, and that was it. So when it came time to actually give birth, we went downstairs into the bathtub, and we had a pretty big tub, and there's about a foot of water in there, and she got in and I got in, and you know, she started squeezing out that baby. Um, and something interesting happened. Uh, the doula said, if you have the urge to pee, you know, because I guess she would, pushing the baby out, she said, if you have the urge to pee, just go ahead and pee, because urine is sterile. And even in that, you know, incredible moment, I, that still grabbed my attention. I was like, really? Isn't that interesting? If urine is sterile, then why do we wash our hands after we pee? First of all, I mean, in, in the billions and billions of times, well, maybe not billions, but in all the times that I have, that I have urinated, I mean, let's say since I've, I've been an adult, since I was 18, the amount of times that I've urinated and gotten urine on my hands it's got to be less than one percent I mean it I, I don't know what everyone else is doing just spraying like a garden hose or what but I I mean it's got to be less than one percent and if that happens yeah I you know what urine on my hands so I'll go and I'll wash it off right um, but you know if that doesn't happen then why am I washing my hands um, even if I do get urine on my hands it's sterile why do I need to wash it off? Really, it's it's almost like getting water on your hands, right? Um, I mean, anyone watch like uh, Bear Grylls, the survival guy? He drinks his own urine, right? It's it's a it's a common survival tactic. So if you can drink it, what's the problem, right? You know, I think this sort of goes back to the Victorian era, where it's like, you know, it's not about the urine. It's about the member, right? It's about penises being dirty, I think. I think that's the mentality that people have. They're like, ooh, you touched your dirty penis, and now you're gonna start touching me or other stuff. I, th I think that's the issue that people have. Uh, which, of course, is, is antiquated and silly. I mean, again, I don't know where other people's penises have been, but you get up in the morning, you, I mean, let's say you have a shower, you're going to clean everything nice and clean, you're going to put your underwear on, put your pants on, and then go to work, or go to school, or go to wherever, um, and your, you know, your junk is just staying in there, it's not going anywhere, it's just hanging out in there, it's just recent, recently been washed. Uh, your hands, on the other hand, have been touching everything. You, you've been scratching your nose and face and picking your nose and scratching your ass and touching God knows what, right? Your hands are covered in filth. Your penis is perfectly clean still, should be. So you go to the bathroom, time to have your first urination session of the day and you're going to touch your nice clean penis with your disgusting hands and then wash your hands afterwards that almost seems backwards to me I mean it, it's almost like you should be washing your hands before you touch your nice clean penis and get it all dirty <laughs> right I mean why are you why are you washing your hands I mean the, the only thing I can think you know and when you say this to people if, if you say to someone oh yeah I don't wash my hands after I pee they're just they're ew, they're disgusted like you're a, a piece of human filth or something 
Why? You know, again, my, my penis isn't that dirty. I don't know where all these other guys' penises have been, but um, I, I, I don't see a need to wash my hands afterwards. I should also say, we're not talking about number two here, right? Obviously, if you're taking a crunch, you should certainly wash your hands. There's lots of bad stuff going on there. Definitely wash your hands there. We're just talking about number one. So, I mean, what am I getting at here? What I'm getting at here, other than trying to get people to stop washing their hands after they pee, and by the way, there is a an issue there. Um, typically, the, the soap in bathrooms is antibacterial. Um, and ac antibacterial soap, this is the same reason why I don't spray down when I go to the gym. <laughs> Again, look at this. I'm such a disgusting animal. Um, when I go to the gym and I use a piece of equipment, everyone likes to spray it down with that antibacterial crap and wipe it off. I don't. Right? Um, overuse of antibacterials. Um, there was a rash of it back in the early 2000s um, with all the, oh, the H1N1 and the swine flu and the avian flu and all that crap. And fucking everywhere you went, there was antibacterial crap. Um, it creates, the, the overuse of it creates super germs, right? Um, so in particular, uh, there's a, a strain of staph, staphylococcus, that, you know, they assume was created in a gym for exactly because of that, because of the overuse of the antibacterial sprays that gets used again and again and again. And because of that, it builds up a resistance, um, you know, much like human beings build up resistance to things, right? And now there's this super strain of Staphylococcus out there that can't be cured by antibiotics and is killing people. So they're actually, so the overuse, the overuse of antibacterials and, and, and washing hands and all this stuff actually does have a downside as well. The, the real issue I'm getting here is, is people, it, this is about people doing things without thinking about why they're doing them. You know, sort of just going through the motions. Here's another question for you. Why do we have doors on our cupboards? Right? In the kitchen. Go in the kitchen and you got your cupboards and there's doors on the cupboards. Why? Well, what, what are the doors for? Um, I mean, what is this, Beauty and the Beast? Your dishes are going to fly off the shelf and start dancing around? There's no need for the doors. Right? They're, they're just... Cupboards are cup boards. They're just shelves to put your cups on and your plates. What are the doors for? The, you don't need them, right? But I bet if you went into somebody's house and walked into their kitchen and none of their cupboards had doors, you would be like, who is this freak? You know, you, you'd probably be like, you'd think they were a hillbilly or something. But there's no need for the doors. In fact, it's just an inconvenience because then you have to open the door to grab a cup. If there's no door, then you just grab the cup and away you go. You know, more to the point, if someone, you ever been over at your friend's house and you're getting a glass of water and you're like, which one's the cups in? And you're opening all the damn doors. If there's no doors, you just go, oh, there's the cups and you grab one and away you go, right? It's an it's actually an inconvenience. I mean, again, it's, it's one of these things where it's like, okay, well, why are we doing this then? Why are we, and, it's sort of this ingrained thought in society where, and the origins are, again, the origins of the, the hand-washing thing, I, I think might be rooted in sort of this, uh, you know, this penises are dirty or, or genitalia is dirty, that, that kind of crap, right? Um, I think it's rooted in that. Um, the, the doors on the cupboards thing, I think, is a... I mean, if I had to guess, if you look at cupboard doors, they're usually ornate. There's usually like design. There's like fancy handles, and I think it, it was uh, it was one of these things where, you know, the aristocracy was, you know, they they're always trying to separate themselves from the lower class people, right? So, hey, you know, they got they don't have doors on their on their cupboards, so we're gonna put these fancy doors on our cupboards because we're better than them. Right. This is sort of this is actually where the whole idea of etiquette and, and whatnot came from. Uh, you know, not putting your elbows on the table. Like why? Um, 
you know, all, all these things came from the aristocracy or the royalty, nobility, trying to further them, trying to separate themselves from the lower class people. We're better than them because we don't put our elbows on the table. And we're better than them because we don't eat with our hands. And we're better than, you know, we're going to look down our nose at these people because you can see their plates in their kitchen sitting on a shelf. Ugh. There's no doors covering their food. Oh my goodness. What a faux pas. I think a, there's a lot of these things that come from that. And, and the interesting thing about it is the lower class people, and I'll include myself in that, you know, traditionally throughout history, we have tried to attain that. We always wanted, we looked up at that big castle on the hill or that mansion on the hill and we go, oh, I want to be like that, right? So we emulated, we, we started to emulate these behaviors, right? The, uh, the etiquette, the manners, you know, all this stupid shit. I would imagine when all the settlers came, you know, to, to North America back in the day and they were living on the, in the wild west or in the prairies or whatever, I, I, I can pretty much guarantee you that none of them had doors on their cupboards, all right? They probably had a better use for that wood, right? They just had shelves with cups and plates on them, right? But we all, we we're always trying to aspire to be, you know, more like those, those people that live up on the hill that, that look down their nose at us. And I think a lot of the things... You know, especially when it comes to, I guess this is turning into like a manners and I'm not a big fan of manners. I'm not a big fan of etiquette. Uh, I'm just, it just, a lot of it seems silly and pointless. You know, for someone to look down at their nose at me because I put my elbows on the table when I eat, like, fuck you, seriously. Um, like, who, like, seriously, you think you're better than me because I put my elbows on the table or because I, you know, don't put a, a napkin on my lap before I eat or whatever any of that crap is. I, I really, I, I'm, I don't know about it, most of it. You know, oh, I don't eat my salad with a fucking chilled salad fork. The big thing here is that we try to emulate it, right? Yeah, you have all those snooty, you know, aristocrat types that are, that think they're better than everyone, but you know, all the, the blue collar people are still trying to emulate that. They're still trying to be like that. Um, and, you know, I guess we've sort of progressed in that direction throughout history because we've always, you know, in a way looked up to them and wanted to be like them, right? So, I guess ultimately this, this video is just uh, sort of about... Th this video is sort of the crux of my whole, all my videos, which is... Just think about what you're doing. Just, you know, don't just go through the motions. Don't just get up every day and and do, you know, what everyone else is doing or just don't always do what you're told. You know, think about it. Think about, like, why? Why are we washing our hands after we pee? Why are we, why do we have doors on our cupboards? Why do we, you know, why do we have pillows? Why do we have pillows? Why? You know, pillows... I think we're invented because people used to sleep on a on on the ground or you know some hay so they needed something to rest their head on we sleep our beds are essentially giant pillows why do we need pillows it actually causes back problems you know so just think about it just, just think about what you're doing ask questions ask questions everybody that's what i'm doing